Today is the 24th of May, which means it's Pan Awareness Day or Pan Visibility Day. And I thought I would talk about five books with Pan main characters that I really, really enjoyed. This is my Pan Pride flag. And you might be wondering, what is Pan? Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary defines Pan as attracted to people of all genders or without regard to their gender. Pan Awareness Day or Pan Visibility Day was created in 2014 by a group of Pan activists and Pan allies to create awareness around an identity which is still seen as kind of weird or strange. Since 2015, it has been celebrated annually on the 24th of May. The first book I want to talk about wasn't the first book that I read with Pan representation, nor was it the first book I read with a Pan main character and not even like Pan on page, but it was probably the first book that I read that I absolutely fell in love with that has a Pan main character and that is The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. Let me tell you this, this was a really really fun read. It's about Claire, who's the main librarian of the Unwritten Wing in Hal's library. <laughs> and this consists of books that hasn't been written because the author never got around to it, they passed away or they just decided not to finish the book. In addition to having to repair and take care and catalogue all these books, Claire also has to keep an eye on characters from the books that want to materialise. What happens is that the hero, which is actually from Claire's own book that she never gotten around to write, he escapes. Claire has to go out into the world and get the hero just so that he doesn't interfere with the earth. Of course, going out into the world and trying to find the hero who is actually trying to find his author is not an easy task and there's a lot of hurdles and a lot of things happening and then of course there's an angel popping up uh, for reasons and I'm not going to spoil this so I'm not going to give any more details but just let's say that it can be a little bit chaotic maybe. It's a really, really fun read and highly recommend. The next book I want to talk about is this book and it's Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. And this was another fun read. It's a science fiction fantasy book. You have Ari who has absolutely zero impulse control. So she is on this spaceship and she sets off an alarm. This makes her having to flee and she, she flees with her brother. They land on the old earth where she finds the sword in a tree and she pulls it off. This is kind of the start of the whole thing. It's a King Arthur retelling because Ari, of course, this is not a spoiler, is King Arthur reborn. Then, of course, Merlin has to kind of show up and help her out. There's a lot of LGBTQIA plus representation in this book. Ari herself is Pan. I think there's a second book as well that has come out, but I have only read the first book. A very, very fun read, so highly recommend this as well. I read Dead Space by Callie Wallace for Queer Readathon in December and I will leave a link to that up here somewhere and in the description box. And this is a science fiction and crime novel that I absolutely fell in love with when I read it. It's about Hester who is an AI expert and she used to work on this big ship. Then the ship was targeted for a terror attack. Almost all of the crew was swiped away and she was one of the few survivors. However, she was really, really badly hurt. She was getting a lot of surgery. Because of that, she has a huge debt. Now she works as an investigator to pay off her debt. One day she gets a message from a former co-worker and it's a kind of mysterious and very odd message. She doesn't really understand it. Just a few days later, he is murdered. She is the one who's going to investigate this murder and she discovers that things are not quite as they have seen. So very, very intriguing and interesting book and I was really, really swapped up in this book, I think. It was very hard to put down. It was very exciting. I absolutely loved it. Hope to read more by this author at some other point. 
I actually have a whole reading vlog on the witch's heart on my channel. I will link to that up here as well as in the description box. I absolutely love this Norse mythology retelling on Angerboda. This is a um, Norse myth that I, I know it, but I'm not like deeply knowledged about it, but still I know enough about it to really really enjoy this book as well as see as the author really knows Norse mythology, which is close to my heart being a Norwegian. In this book there is Angerboda and it starts with her being burnt because she has shared her visions on the future with the wrong people. Because of that Odin is punishing her for that, burning her. And that is kind of where the story starts. She moves to the Ironwood, she meets Loke and she falls in love with Loke. She has two kids and this is all if you know any Norse mythology and you know any story like behind the Norse myths, you will know that these are not spoilers, these are like very well-known Norse myth <laughs> elements. She gives birth to these two and there's a lot of things going on with her relationship with Loki. There is also another strong character and that is Skadi, which is also like a god Jotun kind of thing. She and Angerboda are really really close friends. This being Pan is probably because of her relationship with Loki who is kind of a gender bender, if you would say. Loki is sometimes a woman or sometimes something else. You never know with Loki. It's a very, very, very enjoyable read indeed. Last but not least, one of my favorite fantasy books, which is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. The story of this book is set in Thanapolis, which is a place where if you have magic, you are bound to an undead spirit which will control you because having magic is super super rare then if you do have magic you will have to serve the king by law. The main character of this book, Robin, she is a pan blood mage ever since her father died trying to protect her from the fate of being bound to an undead spirit. Robin has been working very hard to hide her magic. Unfortunately, one day there's an accident and accidentally she reveals her powers by saving someone's life. She's taken to the palace and bound to an undead spirit. She is not happy about this at all. She really, really wants her independence back. She, at the same time as doing this, trying to figure out how to get free, she can't help herself falling in love with two people. The kind of rebellious princess Lydia as well as the undead spirit she is bound to, actually. Neither of the two are people she can trust fully. Robin discovers some secrets that are really, really important. So much things happens. There's a lot of intrigue, there's a lot of things happening. It's a very fast-paced and intriguing book. One thing I really loved about this book, as well as the writing style that I enjoyed, is that it has a very, very diverse set of characters, which I really, really enjoy. Those were five books that I really enjoy and that has Pan main characters. I would love to hear if there's any books with Pan main characters that you have read and would recommend. Please leave a comment of that in the comment section. Please, I would love to hear it. Also, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and press that little bell icon so that you don't miss out of any of my content. That will make me super happy and also help me a lot. That's it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.